Hello and welcome back to another Space Engineers Showcase video. In today's video we're looking at another transport ship. This time it is utilising the vector thrust script in order to have thrusters on hinges in order to get around. Now the vector thrust script is something I have showcased on this channel multiple times before and it allows you to have thrusters on stuff such as hinges and rotors in order to skip out having thrusters in each direction. In this particular setup we've got hinges to control the upwards, down and left and right. Pressing F10 and finding the bobcat in the spawn menu, there it is. This thing is 1145 small blocks using the Sparks of the Future DLC pack and the Wasteland DLC pack. It uses no mods but of course it's got a few scripts in order for it to function. So we'll give this a little thumbs up and come all the way around to the front. We'll have a quick look around the outside. So at the very front here, in fact I'll just move my character out of the way, there we go. This is what we have at the front. So we've got our fighter cockpit to fly this thing around and of course control everything to do with our script. And in front of that and surrounding it we've got some dirty steel blocks with two spotlights and two interior lights at the front. The two interior lights are for our emergency beacon where if we activate number 9 on our hotbar we'll start blinking and put out a emergency distress signal. If we move around the side past our cockpit we'll see how our hinge is coming across from the main body onto our large atmospheric thruster. The atmospheric thruster has been surrounded a little bit by some steel blocks for some protection and of course decoration and we do have some barred window blocks there from our wasteland DLC pack for some more additional decoration. If we continue along the side there we've got some cameras and spotlights just behind our cockpit just to be able to light up the darkness and to aim this thing if we don't get a good view from the cockpit window. And as we move all the way along over to here we can see some gyroscopes inside there. We do have some parachute hatches on the side and we do have a doorway to go in and out. Coming up this little part here is how we're going to transport our passengers from one place to another. Our chairs have been angled via a rotor and we do have plenty of LCD screens, plenty of program blocks in here telling us absolutely everything going on with this ship. And some of these I have never seen before but that is some fancy stuff right there telling you the battery power and the usage and all that. That is a very clean display. Yes we'll come back to that a bit later. Coming out of there and continuing along we're going to see another thruster pod right here with the same setup as the one at the front. Just a large atmospheric thruster, some steel blocks, barred windows on a hinge. Now come across over to the very back where we have a single static large atmospheric thruster to push us around and four small ones to help us stop. We've of course got our Wasteland DLC brake lights at the very back there and another spotlight just to help light it up in the darkness. If you were just to drop down and come underneath we'll see another green light as well as some small atmospheric thrusters. We can see the bottoms of a few batteries and we've got some blast or edge blocks that run all the way along the base of this thing. So we did take a hard fall, we're not going to be damaging it too much. As we move along there we can see some more sneaky atmospheric thrusters, some small batteries, some beacons and we can see some gyroscopes and reactors just lining up the edges of this connector right here. Then moving all the way along to the front there, this is what we get. So there we go. Then if we were to come up and above, there's our cockpit right there. We can see the tops of our spotlights, we can see another gyroscope right there, a laser antenna on the very tippy top as our main decoration piece. And then towards the back, some more blast or edge blocks. And we see in there a small little beacon to make sure we can always find this thing. And there is our thrusters right there. So if I was to quickly grab my character we can have a quick look inside. Then we'll get into the fun part of testing this thing out. Now I will just do a word of warning. Because this is a vector thrust ship. It's going to be a little bit wonky to fly around. So it's not going to be absolutely perfect like most ships with static thrusters. But you do have to kind of use your imagination a bit with these types of ships. Coming up to here and opening up the doorway, we do have a button on both sides to close this up. And this is what we have on the inside. We've got our angled little seats to sit down on. And we've got some nice lighting in here so we don't have to waste power on our suits. With the LCD screens up here, or programmable blocks even, we can come up to it. And we can see everything going on with our battery and our power usage. And then come down to here where we can see how the room has been pressurized with our air vents and oxygen tanks and all that. Then of course we've got our thrusters and reactors and what going on with them. Turning around and going to the opposite side even more LCD screens but these ones are a little bit more familiar. We've got our flight control panel telling us our speed, altitude and all that. Of course our artificial horizon. Then looking up we can see the name of the ship, the version number and of course all the scripts that are present on the ship such as the flight info 
the automatic LCD screen script, our vector thrust number 2, and then our fancy status display. Yes, looking up there we can then see another very useful screen telling us if our landing gear are locked or unlocked, our connector, and then we have something else which is offline. Yes, it's a very fancy little room, and quite roomy as well compared to my character. It's fairly large for a small ship. But with that done, we can come out of here, move along to the front, and then we can play around with this ship. So bringing up the hotbar and undoing the parking brake, we are now going to press number one, and it's going to activate our thrusters and we can lift up. We will see the hinges folding up and down as we try to move this thing around and fly it around because it is trying to adjust itself to keep itself balanced. The only downside of using a vector thrust ship is that you can't really keep it perfectly still. As you can see there we are fairly balanced and the ship itself will not be able to stop completely. It's going to drift a little bit as it tries to adjust itself constantly. Yes, one and two is to turn on our vector thrust on and off. Number two will just turn it off and we'll fall down to the ground and number one will turn it back on. Of course when we're turned off our vector thrust will just fold all the way up nice and neatly. When we press number one it will then fold down and we can go fly away. Number three is for our landing gear to lock and unlock this. Number four is for our camera straight forwards next to our cockpit. Number five is to view straight down. Six is for our spotlights all the way around this ship. Number seven is for our interior lights which is going to be for our emergency sequence when we're in trouble and we hit number nine these lights will start blinking to try and give your position away to any allies coming to rescue you. Number 8 is going to be to open and close the doors around the ship. So we can press that, everything will close up and now your passengers are nice and safe. Number 9 is an interesting block. We're going to activate this and we're going to jettison out a little beacon below us with a parachute that will drop down to the ground. If I put signals on and look down, we'll then see a mayday signal coming from this. So if we were in trouble, we could just jettison that out somewhere and then your allies will be able to come over to the signal and will have a rough idea of the area you are in. Of course, you could use this to lure out enemies by dropping this nearby, then going to set up an ambush, but that's entirely up to you. We only get one shot at this item, so you have to make sure you know what you want to do with this thing. Anyway, tab number two, we only have one button which is going to be for our emergency parachute landing. Yes, it's quite a mouthful to say that thing, but we can press number 9, and we'll then put out our parachutes, and we'll come down to the ground. There we go. So yes, that is only if you lose power, or perhaps one of your thrusters are damaged, and you don't want to rely on flying this to the ground yourself. You can just hit that button, and you'll just turn off your thrusters, activate the parachutes, and then you can hope for the best. Tab number 3, 4 and 5 is empty so we can press number 1 and we can lift this thing up and fly it around properly. So going forwards, this is what we get. We won't do a proper thruster test with this because it's a little unfair because of how it's been set up. But yes, flying around, we can get some good speed and as I turn around you'll see the thrusters just bending themselves up and down to try and balance themselves out and trying to do what I'm telling the ship to do in terms of control. Yes, we can just fly this thing around. It's not too bad. It does have a small little issue of trying to overcompensate when I try to turn like this. It'll then suddenly shoot itself up and then we gain momentum in the opposite direction. It's quite odd to describe. If you were to download and play around with it, you'll understand what I mean. But yes, flying this around. This is a very nice, very smooth way of flying around a vector thrust ship. It's a lot more safer, a lot more less juddery than using rotors. The hinges seem to be a very good way to go with this script. And of course it's a lot more safer and less likely to break the game using hinges instead of rotors. But that is pretty much it for the Bobcat transport ship. It's a very nice little ship to play around with. It's a lot going on with it and I do highly recommend you download and check it out just to see how this script handles and the things you could do with it. I know I personally experimented with this script before and I do have a little ship over here called the Failed Ship because unfortunately it has a tendency to turn itself into a blender and then spontaneously explode. But maybe I'll do a video on that at some point else. But yes, like I said, that is it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and there'll be a link to it in the description below if you do wish to download and play around with it yourself. And I'll be back with another video some point soon. Bye bye. <laughs>